So in this video, I wanted to talk briefly about Bitcoin again. Yesterday, and in fact in the last week, Bitcoin has suffered terribly. I think the value of Bitcoin has gone down by something like 30%. So from its high of $20,000 back in like November 2017, it's now down to about $9,000. It may have even gone into $8,000. Absolutely unbelievable. And I did make a video on why I think the Bitcoin bubble is going to burst. Um, but I'm not sure whether I quite believed it myself because there's so much hype about Bitcoin, people saying it's going to get up to like $100,000 and how it's the next, still the next big thing. Um, in the back of my mind, I was kind of thinking, yeah, it's grown exponentially. This can only go one way. And it looks like that was kind of true. But I've got a couple of other things that I've kind of thought about over the last few days, reasons why I kind of think the Bitcoin bubble um, is definitely going to burst at some point in the future. There are two major limitations of Bitcoin, which I'd like to share with you now. Um, if you disagree with me, leave a comment down below because I mean, I don't understand all this. I'm not I'm neither an economist or an expert on cryptocurrencies, but these are just things that as a sort of professional amateur um, occur to me as potentially problematic with Bitcoin. So firstly, the blockchain. And specifically, if you download a Bitcoin wallet to your computer, you have to download the entire Bitcoin blockchain, the entire history of Bitcoin transactions to your computer. So this is the reason why Bitcoin is so secure, because every computer has a record of each transaction. So it's incredibly difficult to have fraudulent activity on the Bitcoin network. The problem is that that means that if you want to have a Bitcoin wallet on your computer, you have to download 140 gigabytes of transaction data, which takes hours before you can send, receive, view or use your Bitcoin wallet. And that rather seems prohibitive to me, especially on my MacBook Pro, which has only got a 250 gig hard drive anyway. Um, that seems like a lot of data. That size is only going to grow. So the problem is going to get worse and worse and worse. Now, there are some alternatives like online wallets and things. And I've been using Bittrex to store um, my cryptocurrencies. But I've been warned by people and read online that actually that's not very secure. That kind of defeats the point of using Bitcoin, because as soon as you use an online wallet, you're susceptible to being hacked or having your details stolen or having their website go down or having them run off with your money or something. So on one hand, you can use an online wallet and be at risk of having all your money stolen. And on the other hand, you can have a 140 gigabyte file on your computer. Just seems really strange to me. And the second issue that I think is quite interesting is the transaction fee. I went to send myself some Bitcoin from Bittrex and I worked out the fee, which was a small percentage of a Bitcoin, actually worked out to be about £8. And these transaction fees are actually unavoidable. So this means surely that you could never buy a packet of crisps or something with Bitcoin, because you'd also have to pay the £8 transaction fee. And if the value of Bitcoin goes up even more, then the transaction fee will go up as well. It sort of makes me feel like they didn't really expect Bitcoin to be worth nearly $20,000 or whatever it is now, $1,000 again, because I guess when they started, 0 0.0001 of a Bitcoin was probably like one cent and kind of not really prohibitive to to making a Bitcoin transaction. So they're the two problems that I think exist with Bitcoin. The physical size of the blockchain that you have to download if you want to have a wallet on your computer and the transaction fee. And they are a bit of a big deal, as Ron Burgundy would say, because they are the things that are probably most important if you intend to actually be serious about using Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies. And there are other alternative currencies out there, but there are so many of them and it remains to be seen uh, which ones are actually going to be successful, if any of them. So it's not as if you can sort of 
buy them and try and use them because they're not accepted in most places. They're exceptionally volatile. So if you put £100 in today, it could be worth £500 tomorrow or it could be worth nothing. But let me know down below whether or not you think I'm right, whether I'm missing something or whether you think there are bigger issues than the blockchain and the transaction fee. I've got some other rambly Bitcoin and cryptocurrency videos on this channel if you want to have a look at those. Subscribe if you like my videos and all that. Thanks for watching and I shall see you next time for another video.